welcome to Youth Perspective. This is an interactive show that we have with the youth. We speak about some of the challenges they face on a day-to-day -day basis. My name is Masi Chaba Lamini, and today we are speaking about the role that the youth plays in leadership. With me, I have a live studio panel that will help me further unpack this issue. I'm just going to like everybody to introduce themselves. Good afternoon, Master Chaba. My name is Nkele Molabo. I'm a councillor in the city of Tuami Municipality, and I'm super excited to be here. I'm looking forward to engaging on this important topic. Hi, Nkele. Good afternoon, Master Chaba. My name is Ndumi Somokako. I'm an activist of the African National Congress Youth League and a young professional. Thank you very much for having me on your show to come and discuss about the future of South Africa. Greetings, <laughs> Ndumi Good afternoon, my name is Dino Bravo. I'm a DJ music producer and uh, an entrepreneur in the music business, and I'm looking forward to the topic today. Welcome, Dino. We are also joined by a live studio audience that will definitely be joining in on the conversation as we start this discussion. Firstly, um, the youth is a very important aspect in anything that happens in the country and the world at large. Um, there has been great movements that have started because uh, the youth simply took a stand and said, we want to do this and we'll sh we're making sure that it's going to happen. What do you think on a general basis the youth has to offer in any kind of leadership? Master Chaba, where, where do I start? Um, you said yourself that there are a lot of things that happened in the country that were pioneered by the youth. Um, the youth of 1976, as, as, as much as we've been talking about them, we, we cannot forget what they did for, for the country. And obviously what they started back then needs to continue now. And that is where we come in as the youth of today. Our role in today's society is, if you look at the issues that are facing the country, a lot of them have to do with youth. Crime, unemployment, drugs, you name them. And as the people who are directly affected by those issues, we are the right people to deal with them. Hence, it's important for us to be included in the leadership roles. And just to come to you, Ndumiso, um, we, we can never leave out politics in anything that we do. Um, politics is, is, is something that is constant. How you choose a certain brand over another when you are in a supermarket, that is technically politics. What do you think the politics aspect of things suits into the private sector when we get to a job and you're a young person and there are all these older people that think you don't know much at that stage? Look, we must first make an appreciation that young people have always been at the center of fundamental change in society and in the evolution of societies in the world. If you go back to history, you'll discover that uh, many young people did uh, commendable things or many people we celebrate today did commendable things while they were still youth. To mention a few, you will speak of uh, Karl Marx. He writes a very seminal book, uh, The Communist Manifesto, when he was in status. The oldest liberation movement in the continent, the ANC. The idea of forming it was brought by a young Pixley Kassem who was in status. So there is no way in which any society can move forward if it marginalizes young people. So whenever you get to any space and there seems to be an attitude that does not want to invest in young people, you ought to be worried. Whether it is in the private sector, it is in politics, it is in the church, it is in a cultural group, because the future of any institution and organization lies with its youth and the type of youth that it produces, and even that of the society we find ourselves in. So if you get to a workplace, if you get to any organization or any institution, and you get the sense that they are anti-young people, or they do not believe in investing in young people, we ought to be worried. Because in one way or the other, they say they do not believe in the future. Because science tells you that the older you get, you are, pro you are marching towards your grave. <laughs> you can't run away from that. And it is only the young who, will, who are the propellers, who are the heirs of the revolution, who are the heirs of what is to remain behind. So any institution, any space in society, any site of power ought to make deliberate interventions to invest in young people such that they safeguard the future. Definitely. Um, and then, Dino, just to, I think carry on with what Ndumiso said, that the youth is basically the people that are going to champion anything forward. Do you think that the youth takes themselves seriously, takes the initiative that they can bring to the table seriously? Well, 
Yes and no. There are instances that uh, the youth is inspired. And when they are inspired, they make very good changes. There are instances that they look at themselves and they say, you know what, I'm still young. There's still time for me to Definitely, do that. Uh -huh. But you see, the music industry is one of the industry that is driven by the youth, pretty much. So we are pretty much in the forefront of investing in the youth and making sure that uh, you know, they achieve what they need to achieve. I think our role towards the people that have been doing it for a long time is pretty much just giving them the right inspiration. Because with the right inspiration, we can achieve anything. We can drive the youth to levels unseen around the world. I think you touched on a very important matter regarding um, the music industry, entertainment industry. Do you think the industry is doing enough to empower the youth? Um, this, this comes from a very packed question where there are parties, there's alcohol, there's drugs, there is, there is all of those things that come into effect with, with going out and clubbing and so forth. Do you think the industry takes time out to say, what are we doing to empower these same people that are supporting our cause? You see, the thing is that the music industry is very marginalized because of the points that you touched. There is alcohol, there is all kinds of stuff. And people often forget that those things are personal choices. Alcohol is there, you are not forced to consume it. Nobody points you a gun and say you must have that. Those are personal choices. The thing is, we are in the forefront, and I think the music industry in general is doing enough to empower young people. It's just that not every young person is interested. Because most of today's youth is, they're interested in the finished product. They're not interested in the journey. Because people see statement. me standing in front of 15,000 people and say, whoa, I want to be like him. But they don't know what goes behind being like me. They don't know that before I got there, I used to clean. I used to sweep. And I work my way towards getting there. I really think we just need to keep inspiring the youth to do better. If we do that, as people that have been doing it for a long time, as adults, the youth will be just fine. Interesting. Uh, do we have somebody from the studio audience that would like to join in on the discussion? On the, on the point where you say the media and all of that is not, I feel like we're not getting empowered by the older people because now you get to points where you want to be in the music industry, but then you're not having help from the people that are in it already. So yes, you all have your background on how you got there, how you're getting there, and all of that. You have your own journey. But then, as you say, the youth say, I want to be like him. They already want to be there, not knowing what they, you have, you've been through or what they have to go through. But sometimes they go, it's hard for them to get there because there's no help from the, the, the people that are already in it or the people that are doing it. So they might have it in them that they're good and they've got the talent and all of that, but they're, they're not getting the help from the people there. So it's always hard for them. So that's why they come across doing their own thing where alcohol and all of that is involved. So I think if there was help, then it was going to be quicker. Thank you. I, I would like to answer you on that point. Um, that is help. The thing is that no many people know how to get the help they need to get to where they want to be. The music industry, if you, everything is online. If you need help, let's say a recording label, you find many contracts online. You, you'll be able to find information that will lead you to your destination if you really search for it. Now, if you find it in looking for some sort of mentorship from a certain individual, that is when the challenges come. Because you find people that it's not that they don't have time, they are just not really interested mm -hmm. until you show that you have something they can work with. That is a very uh, interesting point. And I think just to add on to the, 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 the studio audience, uh, I think I'll maybe forward this to Kelly. Um, not being biased, but since she's female. Do you think that parents take enough initiative 
in, in, in grooming their children, whether it's for leadership, whether it's for them to make those choices that Dino is talking about, that alcohol is not forced on you, but for them to have a more informed decision to say, if I do A, B, and C, I'm going to end up here. So how do I then stay within a cool clan or be a young person and still live an experience, but try to minimize the regrets that I'd have? The role of parenting in that? Master Chaba, we cannot um, downplay the importance of, of um, good uh, parenting, but, and I'm saying this as a mother, and um, you know, mother raising two boys, um, you see, it's, it's not a one-size-fit-all kind of um, um, issue. It, there's a number of factors here at play. So you have this young person who is growing up in this community, coming from a good home, walking out to the street, bad influence. So it's, it, it takes a whole, a whole range of factors to, 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 to address this issue. We need also support from government. Um, the support that is there, the people who are supposed to be spearheading it and making sure that the youth access it, they abuse it. Mm -hmm. So there's, 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 there's quite a number of factors that are involved. It's family, it's the school, it's the society, it's the whole atmosphere, the environment um, that one finds um, um, themselves in. So it takes, it takes everybody. Actually, it takes everybody to make sure that the youth of South Africa is safe, the youth of South Africa is, is employed, has access to opportunities, they can um, start now working for their bright future, yeah. there's hope. So it's, it's not a one-size-fits-all. A parent can only do so much because at the end of the day, this child goes to school, this child goes to church, this child goes to um, party and you know, all those, those sorts of things. So it's not um, um, I'm just a one-size-fits-all one situation that would suit anybody in any yeah. circumstance. And mm -hmm. then Dumiso. Government. Um, government is not looking at any political party. Government is not looking at any specific person. But we are saying the people that are meant to have mentorship programs, the people that I have to, uh, are meant to have internships, to make sure that the same youth is empowered and can lead. And that role of, of, of them in leadership and management positions is more realistic. Do you think we are effective as a country in this aspect? Nope, not at all. But I think, Mr. Chair, for us to properly understand the problems facing young people in South Africa is for us to make an appreciation that they are problems of a system. And these problems do not uh, only affect youth, they affect women. They do not affect, only affect women, they affect black people. Mm. So we find ourselves in a system of capitalism and mm. because of our history, one which is racialized, mm. and, as, and one which is also sexist. So in the margins, what happens is that the few that control the power and the resources make it a point at all times that they exclude the majority, which will find they are black and they are women. And now to get to the point of saying, what then becomes the role of a society? I want to make an example of how this system of capitalism will destroy families. Recently, there was a report released. The report says that only 37% of kids live with a male in the house. Yes. And only about 34, 36 percent live with their biological fathers. And at the center of this, not that there are no irresponsible fathers, they are there and the times, but at the center of this, we find that fathers are away, they are migrant laborers. They stay in Pumalanga, I have a child in Pumalanga, but I must be Johnny come to Johannesburg to find a job and work, and my family will stay alone. Definitely. We find that other, in other circumstances, these young people are condemned mm -hmm. Uh, to, be, to be taking drugs, they are condemned, they are condemned to be to unemployed by the system. And those are the problems that are there. That's how you can capture, if you want to understand the problem of society in general and that of young people in particular. You then get to say, are the interventions which the government is putting in place sufficient? And I say no. Why do I say no? You can have as many internships as you can. But if you do not have exit programs where young people are going to be employed, mm. there's good as nothing. You can give young people free education. But if after free education, they are still going to stand in robots with, uh, with black with gown saying, I'm a graduate, I want a job, it will not help. And to see that these are problems of the system, I can bet you with you now, there is no white young graduate that stands on the street and looks for a job. Yeah. It shows that the system is still when you, when, you, when you go further, it is, it is just an issue of saying, what then must the government do? The government must change the structure in which, our, which owns our economy. It must deracialize it, 
it yeah. must make it must fight the monopolies that are in the industry because that is what is happening that's the reality of the matter so young people are unemployed because there are people who are, who are controlling conglomerates they want profits before people Young, young graduates, and look, when we grew up, we knew that after you go to university, you're going to be employed. Yeah. That's what we all, we all knew. But all of a sudden, because university was now open to black people, there's now a lot of the unemployed system black people. The system has now And because it's not only, as I said, it's not only young black people. Young black women, they are condemned by the system. At the center, I mean, the people who suffer the most in the system are young black women. Right. So I think until we, we get that systematic issue correct, mm -hmm. we're not going to move far. Well, yes, um, do we have anybody from the panel, from the studio and audience that would like to add into the conversation? Honestly, I think that the media is also a factor that influences how the youth can be inspired because most, most parts we get the media that makes or portrays an image of a youth or a teenager that's always going out with friends, following trains, all of those and not portraying of, uh, an image of a teenager that is independent and makes their own choices, realizes what's wrong and what's right, and is able to see, to foresee the consequences that lie ahead. And I think that makes the youth inspired. Yeah. As young people of South Africa, like General has leadership, Ndubiso Mukoko has emphasized, where are we standing tonight as young people? Because we are, at the day, we are going to become graduates and then will be flushed out by the university, join the, or form, form statistics of unemployment young people. So like Oliver Tamu once said, he said, if a country, the youth are actually the future of a country, and therefore if a country is failing to nurture a, its youth, therefore that country does not deserve its future. So we don't know which future is South Africa is actually facing so far, or, and where are we standing, Tina as young people of South Africa? All right, and then I think there's something that Undumiso touched on that for me plays a big role, exit programs for the youth that are in school. Um, it, it, it's, always, it's almost seen as if, if you go to varsity, that is the end goal. But there's like a bigger picture. And we had a topic uh, that spoke about black tax and what exactly this means for a young person that is going to school, exits varsity, finds a job, but then has a whole family to take care of. This points back to another uh, cap or another mask of leadership that the youth still faces. But if you had to look at a white counterpart, this, this, this ideology of black tax makes them progress slower than that of their white counterpart because they do not have the system burden of supporting family and, and members. Your take on that, Nkele? But, Mas Chaba, if, if we are going to sit here and talk about um, the issues in the system um, so long after the, the new democracy, then it means we are admitting that our government failed us. Um, how, how do we sit here and say um, there's one race that gets more opportunities than the other when we as South Africans said in 1994 that we need a new government mm -hmm. and we're giving them an opportunity to lead us and create opportunities for us. And if you come back now and say there are issues in the system, then we are saying our government failed us. They failed to address the same issues in the system because we wouldn't be having the discussion right now. Mm. My view... My view is that uh, it is easy to say this co a person has failed you or this, uh, someone has failed you. But one thing you must also appreciate is that transforming a society is very com it's a complicated task. It's not linear. I, don't, I think it's not a linear, it's, it is something that is not a, lin a linear lie. But you can't also uh, run away from the fact that there were mistakes that were committed. Mm -hmm. And we need to correct that mistakes for us to move forward. For instance, we have always been saying, couldn't have taken the ANC government almost 23 years to say, here is free quality free education. education. Exactly. It, it doesn't make sense. Yeah. We are discussing land expropriation without compensation now. Why must it take them 24 years to say, here is your land, black people, it rightfully belongs to you. Why must it take so long? Those are some of the mistakes that has happened. But that, as that may be, just as we've been saying, you can even, we, we, as we go around to, uh, participating in these uh, hearings on land expropriation, there, there are genuine questions that are coming from our people. Some of us got the land, but we were not supported by the state. Unlike apartheid farmers who, when they were given the land, they were supported by the state through subsidies for them to be able to fund. Mm -hmm. Do we have that budget as our fiscals are now? So those are some of the discussions which we must take forward as a country and say, 
uh, the blame game must stop. That's why that's the first thing we must say. We must all take you. You can't build a, a nation by bashing. Mm. It's yes, not practical. Definitely. For you to build a nation, you need to participate in constructive engagement mm. such that we all find solutions. Mm -hmm. And I'm saying, I am. This is a platform of that nature. I am. If at all she sees me or anyone in here sees me as someone who represents the government. I'm saying, fine, let that be, because I'm a no, member no, no, of the NCU click, but where do we start? No, 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 no. I think, I think right now, right, we can all get to a point where we agree that there are loopholes in this Mistakes system. were committed. Yes. Um, well, mistakes were committed. And currently, right now, as we are, within the politics, within youth development, within South Africa moving forward, in every aspect you look at it, there are loopholes. But to say it's not working at all, would also be wrong. Mm. To say they have failed us, in my opinion, I think it's, it's, it's an extreme, extreme measure. Yeah. You know? They might not necessarily have done what we would have expected for 25 years or 23 years or 20 years post-democracy. They might not have reached that goal. Mm. And it's a fair thing to say, why has free education taken us more than 20 years? It's a fair thing to say, why do I need to go to school and then come back and not have a job? Why do I need to start a small business, but when procurement is done, it says we need a person with over 10 years experience. That automatically says this business, this business is not going to thrive because you want experience from somebody who's just left school. And then I think just on, on, on trying to bring it back, everybody to come back to a central point, um, Dino, music is seen mostly dominated by, by, by males. And I think Ndumisa touched on the fact that in the youth, as much as it's, it's a broad subject, black and women are at the bottom of that sphere of youth. Your take on this? Well, he was right. There are crocodiles in every industry, and in the music industry is no different. Women are monetized. Yeah. And not always the, the best ways to do it. Uh, what I have to advise to women is pretty much stand up. Because there's always choices. There is choices that you will be used and abused. And there are choices that you're not going to get that opportunity now. But if you keep on persisting and being the kind of person that your parents brought into this world uh, with the sort of intentions that your parents installed into you, you will eventually succeed. See, the internet is also a very big part because the youth see a lot of flashy things on social media. Definitely, and do and not they compare these things. a life of somebody that has a makeup team 24 hours behind them than a person that just finished school. It's two different worlds. Definitely, the world is there to glamorize. So it, I say to the youth, ignore the noise. Because all the glamorization is noise. Ignore it. Focus on the goals, which is really what you here for. Focus on the goals. And yes, women are used and abused in this industry. As sad as it is, I have a daughter myself. <laughs> it is sad, but it happens. Okay. Do we have anybody from the audience? Um, my question is to Comrade Ndumiso. Um, you, he mentioned the fact that the, the problems that we're facing are because of the system, and I do agree, right? But my question then becomes is, um, we find ourselves in a position where capitalism is constantly changing its face. And so now it's moving into the fourth industrial revolution and comrades are continue, they're going to continue being unemployed. And so my question then becomes, like the inspiration that Dino was speaking about, where then should young people find the inspiration when we find ourselves in a position where the system is constantly changing and when we think we have the means of production, we find ourselves now having to fight the fourth industrial revolution. After that, who knows what it will transform into. So my question is then, what, where should the youth get the inspiration to say that one day they're going to, to, to be employed at least or to, to have to own the means of production and own the system? Uh, mine goes to Dino also uh, on his uh, emphasis, especially on the, on the entertainment uh, industry, saying that uh, music is a progressive thing that happens in the society, of course. But the take then becomes that uh, what happens with regard to, to the looseness that is overhauling the whole industry of, of music and entertainment as a whole. 
there's a too much lack of provision of leadership in that industry. We have seemed to, to have actually given all the leadership characteristics and understandings to only politicians, as if in the mm -hmm. entertainment industry there are less women beings. So we do not understand. We wish for you to actually, and others who deem themselves progressive, to actually pave a way forward and bring discipline and bring progressive ideas around the, the industry, the, the, the entertainment industry on its own. That is That's what we'll point. have for you, actually. Thank you so much. Um, okay, just to come back to our panel, um, these are closing remarks. You can obviously order your closing remarks and answer the questions that were posed by our audience as quickly, as sharply as possible. Ngele, we'll start with you. Um, there is no time like now, um, and this is my message to the youth out there. There is no time like now. The time is now. Um, we need to, you know, DJ Spoo had, had um, I think it was a, a motto that says, um, you press a push a panda. We must press a pusher and panda. If the opportunities are not presented to us and are not made available for us, we must go create those opportunities for ourselves and empower ourselves. Because the youth of 1976 took it upon, upon themselves to create, um, to fight for whatever they wanted to fight for. So it is now upon us as the new generation to fight for what we want to fight for. And I'm saying the time is now. Thank you. I think, Mr. Chaba, uh, in conclusion, I think there are a few things that we must uh, correct. Uh, I don't think that music is extremely entertainment. Music is philosophical, music is intellectualism, music is an art. I mean, when I don't think that when Brenda said bring back Nelson Mandela to the streets of Soweto, he was entertaining. Entertaining, people. yeah. When uh, Miriam Makeba said Aluta continue as entertaining, he was inspiring Africans in particular and blacks in general to be their own liberators across the continent. So I think let's free music from the industry which has commercialized it and made it something else. But music is an important aspect of our lives where we gain inspirations as individuals on a daily basis. Secondly, I think uh, young people must have a deep appreciation that power consists nothing without a fight. There's no one who's going to come surrender power and opportunities to you in a plate. We must fight for these opportunities. And sadly, at times, we'll have to fight with those who we call our brothers. I think that's, what, that's the only inspiration you can get. Nobody went to the, to the youth of 76 and said, nobody went to the 44th generation of the youth league and said, we think that you are clever, you can do this. No, they fought for their own space. So let us not want to be prefects, head boys, or teacher's pets. Let us be young people who are fighting for our space. Thank you so much. Do you know? Dumiso said it all. <laughs> he said it all. He said it all. And the point I would like to make, especially to you uh, and the sister over there, the reason why many don't succeed in this cutthroat music industry is not because they they don't have the drive. The thing is that people aim too low and eat their mark. This is an industry that hard work and determination will get you there. Nothing will be handed to you. And I'm only one person. I can start with a change. There are people way higher than me that can make better changes like the one you suggested. They can make this with a snap of their fingers but they don't have the backing. Look at Don Laka. He advocated for 90% of South African music on radio. To South Africans, this is new. But around the world, South Africa is late. Every country around the world plays 90% of their music and 10% uh, international music. I've been to the States. I've been to the UK. They don't play any. I mean, now African musicians are yeah. slowly breaking into that industry, but they don't support us. We need to start by supporting ourselves first. And don't lack advocated something good. He had no backing for no one. Mm -hmm. Everyone was against him. Yeah. So it's not an easy industry to get into. And uh, to answer your question, the music industry is an industry, and it does contribute to this economy. Mm -hmm. If you do your maths, if you do your research, you will see we do contribute. We are an industry. That's why it's called music industry. Thank you so much. <laughs> this was yet another interactive episode of Youth Perspective. The future of this country lies within the youth, and maybe it's time the youth takes a firm stand in how they advocate for issues.
My name is Masa Chabalamini, and from myself and the team behind the scenes, thank you for watching and see you next time.